Every year, more than two million of us get a visit from a district nurse. We keep a lot of people safe and in their own homes. Hello! We become really close to our patients. We're in their lives for years. 10,000 of them travel all over the country to wherever they are needed. You really never know what you're going into. It can be life and death for some people. From our birth... Hello! ...to old age. Happy birthday! They work day... Just pop the lights on. ...and night. Oh, she's looking gorgeous, isn't she? ...to help us through the toughest times. Oh, don't cry. Oh, my goodness. Thank You've done you. absolutely amazing. I can't believe I'm home. I'm lucky. I am so, so lucky. East Yorkshire, a rural network of pretty villages and farmland. You know, she seems to be managing. It was just yesterday, but I think she'd had a real blip. District nurse Michelle has lived and worked in this community for the past 10 years. This area, it's a lovely area. Most people know each other, and there's a lot of community spirit. People help out and support each other. For me, community nursing was a definite because I like the one-to-one. -one. Michelle works in a team that helps people remain independent and keeps them from being taken into care. I put back in and she was quite tearful and I think she's realising now things certainly aren't as good. No. Do you know that the home means an awful lot to her? And I think there's, you know, there's big reasons why she wants to stay there and be able to look out of her yeah. own window. I think people are grateful for the services we provide. Um, you know, and knowing that somebody is there to support them, sort of in a time of need, really. A new patient has come onto the team's books. Wendy is 86, and she's having serious falls every few days. I've always fallen a lot in here. I fell off here and broke my arm on there. I can't stop it, you know, I just... Um... There's something making me do it, and I don't know. Last week, she hit her head so hard she needed 16 stitches in her ear. Sometimes I think I'm just stupid and don't concentrate, but uh, I don't know what it is, but I keep going down. Her husband died 14 years ago. She's lived alone here ever since. And she wants to stay. I've been enough old people, so I've seen all old friends and that. And the lovely places, some of them, but not for me. You want to do what you want to do, like if you're in home, you couldn't get up at one in the morning and make yourself a cup of tea or something, or put my video on or something. You couldn't do it if you're in a home. My husband used to say before he died, as long as I can wake up and look through my window, the world's all right. <laughs> Michelle and her colleague Suzanne have come to see if they can help her stay at home. It's not always possible due to people's failing health and sometimes, I mean it's hard um, having to send somebody into a respite, but um, we have to do what's in the best interest of the patient. What's happened to you, Wendy? I landed with my head under the Welsh dresser. I have no idea what I hit, but it made a mess. But all I was worried about was when I got up, there was a pool of blood on the carpet. And I was more concerned about the pool of blood on the carpet. So I had to go and get some vanish and sit there with a towel around my neck while I got put some vanish on it. Are you going dizzy at all? No, not at all. No, no I don't feel dizzy or anything. And she was so fast. how are you going to manage your tea? Are you going to eat in the kitchen? or? Yes. I always manage. I know, but... Uh... Always manage, you don't have I know, to. I know, I know. But we're just trying to make things as safe as possible for yes. you. Because we don't want you being unsafe in there and having a toppling kitchen, do we? The nurses need to explore Wendy's bungalow. I'm removing this top blanket because this is quite a, a falls for Wendy. She's going to catch her foot. She's had a few falls from the bed. 
as a nurse, you look at everything, you look at the whole picture, and we look at every room, look at for any risks, um, anything that could be changed around. Just think that's quite low, isn't it? And if you're a bit wobbly, it's quite low for you reaching out. Have you tried these chairs? Have we? Right, make sure the chair's behind you. Yeah. Both legs. Yeah. It's a bit low, you see. <laughs> right. If we review the kitchen, make it. You'll still make it so bad that, the, that you'll be reviewing that I'm better off out of it. In the no, room. no, we're looking at making it easier for you. That's and I think that. one of the big things is to start eating in here. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going for everything you tell me to do as long as I'm going to stay in this bungalow. Yes, no one's talking about I'm frightened to death way. about moving. I just want to show you when we're not trying to do anything other than keep you here. <laughs> no, bless you. When we finish, we need to know that you're yes. as safe as we can make you, I don't know. we? Fifty miles away. Bob is a former merchant naval officer who lives with his fiancée, Deborah. You want tea and toast yet, Deborah? Um, no, thank you. You like my cooking? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Six months ago, they were due to be married when Deborah contracted a mystery illness. It came out of the blue overnight. It was overnight. You know, she thought she had flu. Um, it was like a flu bug, 24 hour bug. She felt sick, she felt ill. She woke up during the night vomiting, sweating. And that was it, Monday morning she was all the Royal Infirmary, they couldn't keep her alive. They rushed me on a trolley and that's all I can remember until waking up, intensive care. I couldn't move anything. I had a tube feeding me. All I could do is move my eyes. She spent three and a half weeks there in a complete coma state. Um, I think I spent every night praying and shouting to God. <laughs> it was that bad. It was quite scary. Deborah had a rare form of pneumonia. She lost circulation in her limbs, and to save her, doctors had to amputate the fingers of her right hand and both her legs below the knee. Tell you the truth, it would either do that or I won't end up being here. I'd rather have no limbs and still have life. The way I see it now, I'm here to tell the story. But Deborah is determined to start walking again with the help of prosthetic legs. Life before. I loved it. I used to go to work, go out with my mates. At the moment, she can't go upstairs and has been sleeping on the sofa for the last six months. It sounds silly, but it's like being in prison. We had to cancel this year's wedding plans, but uh, next year we'll go for it. I think by May she'll be walking fully without any aid at all. So, what can you say? She's back. A whole team of nurses are helping Deborah to recover. Beth is one of them. I've been doing this job for a long time, for 25 years or so. Um, and we have come across patients, younger patients, that have had amputations before. But what was surprising in this case was that it happened so suddenly to her. It's a very cruel world, I think. Morning, Deborah. Can I come in? And it's Beth. How are you doing uh, with your physio? All right, um, I still get like muscle pains in here sometimes. I'm sure you do, because your arms have got a lot to cope yeah. with in your shoulders, haven't they? What your legs would have done, I guess I you're putting lots of weight through your arms and your shoulders. Still can't go upstairs. Yeah, I'm sick of my room, like. I know, because you're bed set. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got your house. legs at home now, have yeah. you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> brilliant, oh, brilliant. These prosthetic legs arrived two days ago. And how are the wedding plans going? All right, we're having it in. May next year. And presumably you'll be walking for that, is that your goal? Oh, aye. No crutches and all. I'm going to definitely walk down that aisle. I think you're doing so, so well, just, just getting on with everything. I've got to, though, Anna. I'm sure she will walk. She's got her wedding as her goal to work towards. 
She's certainly not feeling sorry for herself. She's just, just getting on and making the most of, of life. Bend your knees. Yeah. Just slightly. That's it. Nice and slowly. The nurses have been visiting Wendy every day. Bring your knee up just a bit. Yeah. As well as making changes to her bungalow, they're trying to help her walk more steadily. Do you feel wobbly at all when we're no, doing that? No. They fuss these girls, but it's nice that somebody does, isn't it? But they're at loggerheads over the rickety old trolley Wendy uses to get around. Wendy has said she's used the trolley for 20 years, I think it's 20 years, and um, I think she's got into a routine of what she does. But she agreed herself that she felt that was the cause of her recent falls, and uh, our, our advice would be for her not to use it. Susanna's got a Zimmer frame, which... Uh, oh, no. I hate that frame. I know. Why do you hate it so I don't know. You're old and it's... No, give over. Pointing out that you're old. No, it doesn't. When you go out, there's people with frames and yeah. scooters no, and wheelchairs. And, and do you not feel it's better that you're safer? Yes. Rather yeah. than... I know yeah. I know you've, you sort of feel a bit proud, don't you? And You've never liked to think mm. that you... No. You're getting older, do you? No. Yeah. I can't believe it. And I don't no, want... No. <laughs> you need to yeah. give in slightly. Wendy takes the new walking frame for a test run. You know, it used to be 16 once. So you're managing quite well with that? Do yes. you feel a bit more secure with oh, that? Oh, I always did feel yeah. secure with it. It's good when patients are opinionated of what they want. It, it just shows that they've still got something about them, you know. Into the kitchen, Wendy. Yeah. You don't want somebody just to agree to everything and not have their own mind. Mm. I mean, that looked a lot better, Wendy. I know, oh, it's easier, I quite agree. You're getting cross with me, aren't you? No, I'm not, but I quite agree that it is easier. Yeah. But uh, I don't feel so old pushing the trolley. I know, but it's not about that. It's about your safety, Wendy. I know. Oh. You're doing your best. I do understand, Wendy. Yeah. I'll yeah, put this trolley in the spare there. bedroom then, Wendy. Right, thank you. As long as it's right. going out of the house. <laughs> The vengeance, I hate this walking free. I know it just seems like we're bombarding you all the time, aren't we, but... Yeah, but when I'm laid out on the floor, I should think about that, shouldn't yeah. I? You're very strong-willed, Wendy. Well, you know, you like to, you like your, your independence, and I don't like... Yeah. But work with us. If we all work yes. together, we can get you yes. to that independence, well, but... I try to work with it. It's just the odd time when I think... Michelle is returning to see Wendy, a patient who's unsteady on her feet and has been suffering falls. Yesterday, Michelle gave Wendy a new, safer walking frame. But this morning, Michelle is greeted by the return of Wendy's rickety old trolley. With your trolley being here, yeah. how, how did you get it through? Because I don't want it here. But I've had that I know. So 15 years with I all know. my leg troubles and that, it's been absolute. But it's so easy, I can do everything. I know. Really. It's habit, isn't it? It is, lots of it's <laughs> habit. Yeah. Breathing's a habit. Well, I know. No, but that's natural, isn't it? Yeah. But this yeah. is just a bit cumbersome and a bit in the way, isn't it, really? Yeah. So is it absolutely necessary for this to be here? It's not really. <laughs> if you right. really want it in the room, take it back in the room. Right. Are we going to come and find it tomorrow? No, I promise. She's won. Put the flag out. <laughs> we'll get there. She's won. She always wins with me. No, it's not about winning. It's just... No, no. Dictator. But it always works. She's always right. So I can shift this now, yes. can I? Do you want your pencil? But she's so handy. I know. 
It is so handy. Well, I'm asking you just to leave the trolley in the bedroom. I, to- I promise you I'll leave it. I won't okay. touch it. I won't touch it. Okay. And we're only doing our best I might to go in and just touch it. it. You might just rub it in. Yes, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> taken it out the house. No, I'm still here. I haven't given you away. No. I wouldn't take it out of the house, Wendy. It's not my job to. It's just... I wouldn't let you. I'm going to miss it very, very much. It's always got its place here. Six months after her surgery, Deborah is learning to walk with prosthetic legs. I'm trying to fit these. Can't get them in. Come here. <laughs> with the help of her fiance Bob, she's been getting used to them for a week. I see, you've nearly done it. Oh, I see. That's it. Just push. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking time, but she feel the benefit of it. She can stand up for two hours, walk around. Slowly, slowly, but she will get there. It's hard to stop it. Off she goes again. <laughs> there you go. Watch a button. That's it. There it is. <laughs> but although she can move around the ground floor, she hasn't been upstairs since getting ill. To me, it's will be the biggest achievement because I am scared of heights. To make it possible, a stair lift has been installed. And today, physiotherapist Barbara has come to show her how to use it. Come in. Hello. 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 Hi, you all right? <laughs> in you go, another way. Hi. Oh, yeah. Hi. And what we're aiming to do is for you to get onto this stair, so you might need to shuffle around a little bit. Be careful with that. Use that hand on the stair rather than on there, because you're just going to slide from there. What you probably needed to do there was bend your knees up yeah, a bit more. Yes, sorry. Push, and then you're not dragging your legs. Wait a minute. Can you stand up from there or not? Um, what happened to Debbie is a, um, a major life-changing event. The journey back to independence is made up of a lot of um, small parts, really, which all put together um, bring a patient back to being as independent as they possibly can be. So you feel secure about your seatbelt yeah. now as well? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Stairs would be a big goal because I know about going to go in my own bedroom, sort my own clothes out, and getting me on bed. And that's the biggest achievement I want to do. Just say, but have a normal life. We try for the chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done, done it! <laughs> right, do you want to have a whiz round while we're up here? Everybody's different, and some people deal with um, trauma in their lives better than other people do. But Deborah appears to be one of those who deals with things very well and just um, gets on with it. Hello, Tigger. <laughs> Hello, bed. <laughs> You're on. Hello. I had me ups and down days like everybody, but I did when I had limbs. <laughs> you go, well, you okay now, are you? You're content. I am. Made her strong, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> For the last five weeks, Wendy has been using her new walking frame. During this time, she hasn't fallen once. Yeah, what more can you want? Be at home. Just, oh, I've had nothing for just to be at home. Worked hard all my life and I've got this little house. You can't want for more, can you, at my age? It's just... 
The nurses are returning for the last time to sign her off their books. Thank you, nurses. Thank you, I really do. Yeah, I, you know, I could cry but for saying it because no, I so I'm appreciate it. I know you do. And, uh, you know. And we wouldn't do any less, would we? No. You've taken the yeah. trolley. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start. Don't start that. And it's really felt, you know, I, when you've all gone, you know, and you've been, I think, oh, weren't well, they really lovely to come and do that for me? Mm. You know, I'm sitting here. I really, really, you know, I, you know, don't joke because I really do. I know. And you deserve it. It's been a good outcome, Wendy. I would say we've achieved our goals with Wendy. Our goal was to um, reduce the risk of falls, um, help her become independent at home again, and for her to stay at home, which um, we've managed to do so far. That's, I don't like that colour for flowers. Oh, that blue? Yeah, it looks artificial. I think the favourite part of my job is helping support people to get better. I think my own feelings are that when I'm older, I just want to be able to be in my own home, have all my friends and maybe family around me, um, and just having my home comforts. <laughs> Come on, sit with me. Sit with me, Harriet. You sit with me. You got it. Yes, I've got it. Today, Deborah has come to choose her wedding dress. You have changed your mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think life's cruel, but it's cruel to other people. You know, we're lucky when we pull through it. We're back on top now. And we're going to do what we want to do. We're going to get married. We're going to lead a life together. I feel like a model. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like running out door, getting all the Bob and saying, come on, we're going to church. <laughs> Give it a few moments time and it'll be pretty near normal again. You look gorgeous, <laughs> you really do.